Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, May 5th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, the computers are listening. How the NSA converts spoken words into searchable text. Plus, if the economy is really improving, then why are big U.S. retailers permanently shutting down thousands of stores? That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, just when you think you're one up on the advertisers because you're able to speed through the commercials via TiVo, well, now retailers have come up with another way to personalize their targeted advertising. They're going to talk to you through light bulbs. That's right. We were just crazy conspiracy theorists a few years ago. But now GE has been developing smart LED light fixtures that are going to take this personal, personalization up a notch. Now, the light bulbs will transmit a code in the light using visible light communication technology, and it's going to communicate directly with smartphones through phone cameras. Now, these, this technology can pinpoint almost exactly where you are. They say it's better than Bluetooth, RFID, or GPS. So when you're walking down the aisle uh, in a store and you've got a bunch of options there, uh, your phone is going to start sending you coupons or product information tied to the products that are on a specific shelf. So they say that the lights are already be being tested at two big outlet stores, and GE expects a complete rollout by early next year. As well, GE, who is heavily invested in data analytics, they're also currently testing the same technology in street lights in San Diego and Jacksonville, Florida. So there you go. We were crazy conspiracy theorists for telling you that that's what this smart technology is actually all about. A targeted advertising. It's not to save the world as they kind of push that out there. But it's not just light bulbs that are listening to you and, you know, our audience out there, you guys know this. It's also your computer. And just how is the NSA listening to you through your computer? I mean, most people realize that emails and, and other digital communication uh, is being siphoned up. It's part of the whole NSA data collection. But now even the words that you speak are being uh, analyzed. It's not so private anymore. So your words really can be held against you. Now, The Intercept is reporting that the NSA can now automatically recognize the content within phone calls. They're creating rough transcripts and phonetic representations that can be easily searched and stored. Uh, these documents also show that NSA analysts were celebrating the development of what they called Google for Voice nearly a decade ago. Now, they, uh, they also point out that even the pending USA Freedom Act is not even going to address this because most of our politicians aren't even aware that this is there. One reason could be because The Intercept is very slowly leaking out the documents that Edward Snowden provided to them, which is perhaps why they haven't been able to put this in their new bill, uh, but they say even if this becomes law, the bill would leave in place a multitude of mechanisms that scoop up vast amounts of innocent people's text and voice communications in the U.S. and around the world. But you know what? It's for our safety. So why are we complaining? We've got nothing to hide. So what are we worried about? It's for our safety. It's to stop the terrorists, right? Well, once again, that surveillance has failed. It failed to stop, yet again, another terrorist attack. Now, we reported how uh, one of the two Garland shooters was already under surveillance by the FBI. So it's not like they were just scooping up a bunch of random text and voice communication and trying to decipher it. They were specifically surveilling. This guy was under surveillance. Obviously, this once again fits the narrative that the FBI is behind most domestic terror plots. Uh, but if anything, it shows what an absolute joke mass surveillance is. But, you know, the administration, they don't want to come off as Islamophobic, right? So they're not going to call this a terrorist attack. The White House press secretary called this an attempted terrorist attack that was averted. Now, I'm sure the guy that got shot in the leg thinks this was an actual terrorist attack uh, and not just an attempt at one. But regardless of how the White House wants to downplay it, ISIS is claiming that this is its first attack on U.S. soil. So they're just going to go ahead and call this a terror attack, and that's their first one. ISIS is claiming that two of the soldiers of the caliphate executed an attack on an art exhibit in Garland, Texas, and this exhibit was portraying negative pictures of the Prophet Muhammad, and they're warning 
Americans that what is coming will be even bigger and more bitter and that you will see the soldiers of the Islamic State do terrible things. Ha! Huh. <laughs> and these are the people that we are not supposed to be offending. These are people who are literally beheading Christians and other people out there in the world uh, for exercising their First Amendment right. And, you know, we don't want to offend these people. We don't want to draw cartoons, okay? Now, the FBI is coming out and saying that there's no indication that these two men were connected to a terrorist group. And the corporate media, however, they are saying that these two had uh, associated, they were associated with ISIS. But that's the thing. People don't even have to officially be part of the caliphate to agree with their ideology and clearly go ahead and carry out a terrorist attack. That is the issue of not calling this what it is. One of the uh, tweets sent out by one of the shooters yesterday pledged loyalty to Islamic State leader al-Baghdadi. Now, here we have ISIS taking credit for this attack, just with a couple of wannabes here in the U.S., yet the mainstream media is wanting to pin the blame on the organizers of the event, uh, saying they shouldn't have offended Islam. Now, meanwhile, we've got a U.S. Muslim group immediately coming out condemning this attack. Uh, this was the Council on American Islamic Rela Relations, and they said, we condemn yesterday's attack on anti-Islam event in Garland, Texas. We also reiterate our view that violence in response to anti-Islam programs like the one in Garland is more insulting to our faith than any cartoon however defamatory. Bigoted speech can never be an excuse for violence. So that is the official statement sent out by uh, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Uh, I think that was very responsible to put that out right away to disassociate themselves because here you are influencing a lot of young Muslims and you do want them to see that even though the Islamic State is saying that they are the ultimate followers of the Prophet Muhammad, you have these other groups coming out and saying, no, that's absolutely not right. And these people are, are saying that our First Amendment rights, free speech, should be protected, whereas the mainstream media, uh, Steve Watson's got this article, they're basically lamenting the fact that Pamela Geller, who was one of the organiz organizers there, offered no apology after the terrorists attacked her event. I'm so sorry that you didn't kill me. I guess that's what they're expecting her to say. Now, this is under the headline, Event organizer offers no apology after thwarted attack in Texas. And the writer said that Geller knew what she was doing when she staged this controversial event. If the contest was intended as bait, it worked. And she accused Geller of being almost gleeful that she had been right. Now, Geller responded to all of this on her blog saying, it is unima unimaginable the descent of the mainstream media into out and out pro-jihad agitation is complete. Two Islamic jihadists attempt to murder hundreds of people at our free speech event in Texas, and the Washington Post says that I offer no apology. So yes, I knew what I was doing. I was standing for the freedom of speech. And so what the Washington Post thinks she was doing was another story entirely. So absolutely, here the mainstream media is just so, pro so progressive. They're just standing up against this people who would offend and insult people who are committing a terror attack on U.S. soil over a cartoon, praising and pledging their loyalty to a group that is beheading people around the world, uh, trying to incite terror around the globe, and we don't want to insult them. And in fact, they hate us so much for our freedoms that we need to give up even more of our freedoms. Where have we heard this before? Now, meanwhile, taxpayers, of course, people are always saying, you know, what would you do if, what would the Christians do if the tables were turned? But taxpayers have shelled out millions of dollars for that Piss Christ art exhibit where they had a cross and a jar of urine and Mary was covered in, in cow manure and stuff. And that was the only thing the Christians got mad about was that they had to pay for it. Okay, so that's, that right there is an art exhibit paid for by the American taxpayer. So there it is right there. It's total lunacy and we're we're seeing right through right through it. Now, coming up, David Knight is going to be joining me in studio. We're going to be talking a lot about the economy, some really big news going on with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and then Alex Jones will be in studio closing out the show. So stick around. <laughs>
My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Welcome back. I'm joined in studio by David Knight, and we are going to be talking a little bit about the state of our economy. Now, experts are warning that the $76 trillion global bond bubble is about to explode. This is Warren Buffett. Uh, he says bonds are very overvalued, and they also did a survey of, of several fund managers agreeing with this sentiment. And the most famous bond expert on the planet, uh, Bill Gross, recently confessed that he, too, senses that a 35-year bull market in bonds is ending. So here are all these extremely wealthy people who have made all of their money off of, of the bonds basically are saying it's coming to an end. Well, yeah, it is coming to an end because they have based this upon a lie. For about 100 years, we've, we've had uh, Keynesian economics uh, thriving, back, going back to the Depression. And of course, what that does is that makes a virtue out of borrowing. And that's what these bonds are. We have a $76 trillion bond bubble that's about to burst. Of course, that's uh, borrowing for large part of governments from banks. The Keynesian economics, uh, the economists have really been the court jesters of the uh, omnipotent state. And this is an omnipotent state that's been run by the Federal Reserve, by the bankers, who are trying to get everybody in debt to them. They want to take everybody's money and they want to turn us into essentially debt slaves. And this is the way they're doing it. They created the income tax just so that we've got an interest only loan, essentially. We've just been paying the interest on this debt, but it's getting much worse. Look at the trade deficit, for example, Leanne. This has jumped to a six year high of $51 billion. And that's just for one month. Right, it went up 43% higher in, from February to March. And, and we cannot sustain this. And this goes back to the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Alan Grayson is a Democrat, and several Democrats have pushed back against this trade partnership. Uh, we had uh, Senator Sessions, a Republican, who pushed back against it yesterday. There's a lot of people who are upset about this. You should be upset about the extreme secrecy of it. And unfortunately, the Democrats are making it, I think it's a bad strategy to make it just about trade, just about jobs, because there is so much more that we should be concerned about in this trade deficit. Ultimately, it comes down to sovereignty. If you look at Europe and they say that 25% uh, of the bonds that are sold in Europe have a negative interest rate. Well, the largest uh, bond company, PIMCO, said that in order to solve the Greece situation, they're gonna have to surrender sovereignty. 
They're going to not only come for our money, for our property, they're coming for our sovereignty. And that's really what's going on with this trade deficit. But let me just give you wow. some figures to put this in perspective. When Grayson talks about the uh, trade deficits, he goes back to NAFTA. And he says that when NAFTA was first enacted, we had never had a $140 billion trade deficit. Immediately after they enacted it, we got a $140 billion trade deficit. We've never had a smaller trade deficit than that since, for the 20 years since. Now, of course, Clinton, who was a Democrat, and give them credit for attacking the Democrats when they're doing the wrong thing. Clinton had said we were going to have a massive uh, new spur to the economy. We we're going to have all of these jobs that were created. No, we have lost incredible amounts. We have lost the meat of our manufacturing. Right. But everybody's going to lose that. We've got an article about the uh, Chinese. Now they're going to be building their first all-robot factory in China. Right. So they're just bringing in cheap labor and, and doing this as a uh, interim solution until they can completely get rid of people who are working. But workers. And this is China, where the, it's like the sweatshop workers. Yeah. And they, even that is too much. They've got labor shortages. They have the people there that... You know, they they sleep underneath their desks. They don't go home. They jump off buildings. They you know they've got nets and things kept ca ca catching people who are just overworked and exhausted. So that's too much trouble. These people don't want to work 24 hours a day. So we're just going to replace everyone with robots. This is a place that you know well, is employing what's really people dangerous. that are working like for a dollar a day. Exactly. What's really dangerous is even though you've got workers who are committing suicide because they put them under so much pressure. What's really even more dangerous in this country is that we are declining. And when you have declining standards of living, uh, that's when people really get upset. That's when things get violent, get dangerous. In China, at least, the vast majority of people there are seeing, even though they're very poor, even though they're overworked, they are seeing an increase in their standard of living. But here we're seeing a rapid decrease, and it's going to accelerate. And that's what Jade Helm is about. Right. But let's go back to this this trade Pacific, uh, uh, the, the trade agreements between the Pacific and the Atlantic uh, agreements. Listen to the way Politico describes this. Extreme secrecy is eroding support for Obama's trade pact. Listen to what you have to go through to look at this. They say you've got to go to a classified briefing. You've got to leave your staff. You've got to leave your cell phone. If you're a member of Congress and you want to read the text, you've got to go to a room in the basement of the Capitol Visitor Center be handed it one section at a time, because I guess they don't want some senator to take the entire agreement and just walk out the door and expose it to the press, okay? You gotta be watched over as you read it, and you gotta hand over any notes that you make before you leave. Now, I would say to you, Leanne, <laughs> who is the government here when you have those kinds of rules put on our elected officials? Right. Who is the real government? Congress is nothing but a facade for this fascist, multinational, corporatism that we've got going. Yeah. That's precisely what it is. But of course, they justified in the article by saying, well, people may not realize it, but these trade agreements are an issue of national security. So whenever right. they want to justify the secretive state, they do it in the name of national security. So they do it again with this. Yeah. Well, Doggett, uh, one of the reps, is pointing out that the cover sheets of these trade documents, they're only marked confidential document. And so they can be transmitted over unsecured email and fax, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. back and forth to these corporate conglomerates, but for some reason, they're restricted to members of Congress. So it that, there it is right there. It underscores who the real rulers are. If you've got any questions about it, read this article about how they clamp down on members of Congress, how they will not let this go out. They talk about stakeholders. Understand that in this new economy, you don't have a stake. Right. You're not allowed to know anything. And quite frankly, uh, these people in Washington, because they're not standing up to this, they're just simply being puppets for this. I am sick and tired of a government that does everything in secret. We've got secret trade agreements. We've got secret courts. The FISA court is secret. It does uh, dragnet, authorizes dragnet surveillance. It has court findings that we're not allowed to see, but they presume that it changes our constitution, even though these things are secret in a star chamber court. Everything that they do is secret. And that's why it is very concerning when we see Jade Helm. We understand that we have this massive bond bubble. We understand they don't want anyone to save, to create. That's why they want to punish this. Right. That's, the, that's why they're coming up with negative interest rates. They're saying that it's to stimulate the economy. But of course, it's not going to stimulate the economy. They want to confiscate cash because they want to know everything about you. They don't want us to know anything about them. It's kind of right. kind of what uh, was said by our founders that you know where the uh, government fears the people, there's liberty. Where the people fear the government, there's tyranny. Well, when the government knows everything about you and you know nothing about them, 
that is the primary way that they're going to enact that kind of tyranny, intimidating people, blackmailing government officials. And this secretive uh, trade agreement is just one way that they're going to move this forward, destroy the economy. And that's why we need to be concerned about these military trainings that we see in the uh, in the urban areas because it's going to break very quickly once it happens. Right, and it's just upsetting to me that we're still being attacked. CNN had an attack piece on us again today about this Jade Helm, uh, but that's what it is. They, they're running with this whole, you know, we're saying that it's going to be martial law and this and that. We're not saying that's happening this summer, but we're saying people should be concerned, and there's a reason why. They are, this is about civil unrest, and it yeah. is happening around yeah. the country. And when you see these trade agreements being enacted, in secret, and then Obama has the hubris to come out and say, this is the most transparent trade agreement ever. Yeah. They're going to be able to look at this thing for 60 days after I decide. But they're only allowed to vote up or down. They can't no make any amendments. That's right. And so when you look and you see, you know, then they say. And as Sessions pointed out yesterday, this, the, the uh, U.S. trade representative has said that these are living agreements. That means that they can bring anyone into this agreement that they want to at any time, and they can make any kind of change that they want to at any time, which is exactly where we are with the bureaucracies. The government right. has uh, abdicated its authority, its legislative authority, the Congress has, to these bureaucracies like the BLM, like the EPA, like the IRS. They write the rules they have the same effect as law. They have their own courts. They have their own police departments go out and round people up. And that's what we're going to see with this multinational trade agreement. It is going to be just a, a group of bureaucrats who are going to uh, continually rewrite this thing. And what we have to right. understand, this article that came out over the weekend, major retailers are closing more than 6,000 stores. Mm -hmm. This is on Infowars.com. It was from uh, Economic Collapse, Michael Snyder. And he points out that he listed only the major retailers that have announced plans to close at least 10 stores. And guess what? This doesn't include the 1,000 stores that McDonald's is closing worldwide. We don't know how many of those are in the United States, but that's just right here. And he says, we're kind of in a stable situation right now. What happens when things get worse quickly? Right. It is going to collapse very quickly. So that's the retail segment. Uh, we've talked uh, yesterday, we mentioned it somewhat about the uh, uh, IT segment, Disney bringing in foreign workers, but of course there's an AI component to that as well. And then look at what we mentioned earlier going on in China. We've got a... Uh, a factory there that is going to use robots only for production. Mm -hmm. They're going to add 1,000 robots, and the goal is to reduce the number of people by 90%. 90%. What are we going to do when we've got 90% unemployment? Right. You're going to have massive riots, Look and at you're Baltimore. going to have massive extermination. Look at Baltimore. That's yeah. their 50% unemployment there, a little over 50% unemployment. That's what it's going to look like in large swaths of this country. And they don't have any answers for that when they're working on this trade agreement in secret. They, they see the writing on the wall. They know it's going to automation. But here they're continually trying to placate us and saying, oh, it's going to get better. That's just a, this, this huge deficit is just a blip. It'll be better for April. Um, you know, but then we're closing down 6,000 major retail stores. Obviously, the Internet is playing a huge role in that. A lot of people are shopping online. That's never going to change. So what, are, what is the answer to this? And it doesn't seem like there is an answer. And then they tell, you know, American students, go get a job in IT or get a job in engineering. And then they do, and they amass these huge student loans. And then those jobs, they think they're good, they're secure because they're working in IT, and they're being outsourced. Well, quite frankly, we can look at just the economic aspects of these trade agreements, and we understand that they are not trade agreements. They're not about free trade. They're managed trade. This is not an open free market. This is crony capitalism of the same type that we saw with the bankers who were too big to fail when they created the mortgage uh, bubble and then burst that. That's precisely what's going on with this. It's an export of jobs, but there's so much more about it because there's the takeover of the Internet. There's forcing people to buy their products, not allowing people to make the decisions, forcing GMOs on them, mm -hmm. forcing our pharmaceutical products on them that most of the world has outlawed many of these toxic things that are that are done here in America because they can get it done with our corrupt government. So this is a way of just taking it to the next level, just right. as India's farmers are, are rebelling against GMOs there, well, they can stop that by doing a trade agreement. And that's the really concerning thing. So what we have here is we've got somebody that's gone into the cockpit of the plane and locked the door, oh. and we're pounding on the door saying, you're gonna fly it into the mountain, and we've got to get this door open. 
We've got to open up our government. We've got to stop this secretive government that makes everything a secret, hides everything from us, and tells us that we're not stakeholders. And if we ever have an elected official like Ted Cruz or Abbott who question what the government is telling us, like they did in Jade Helm, then they are excoriated in the press. How right. dare us question anything the government does because we have to either be permissive and let them do whatever they want to do without question, or we are hostile and they will treat us as hostiles. Absolutely, and in the meantime, they're going to just lie to people through the mainstream media and their minions and also push this propaganda on us. We're going to uh, talk about this coming up in the next segment. Alex is going to be in studio talking about the AARP commercial that we spoke about uh, where they were using um, some type of a military, you know, everyone stay indoors, martial law has been enacted. And they came out and said that they were doing that to to trigger a time in the past, you know, we were just trying to, which martial law? Fake subliminal message. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like, we know that this is a subliminal message, and now it's not just that one. There are several more commercials out like this where they're talking about martial law. It's subliminal messages in, in commercials, but at, at the same time, the media is attacking us and telling us that we are insane conspiracy theorists or even thinking that something like that is being planned or that it's possible. We never had a nostalgic uh, martial law scenario. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that was At a, what always time a fantasy of Barney Fife. It was never a, a part of our nostalgia. But yeah, it's very interesting that they would put it in there. And their uh, explanation for it really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what we're here to do is just expose you to all the lies out there, the propaganda in the mainstream media. And of course, this Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to just be filled with more propaganda. They're telling us that they have to pass this so that China doesn't set the rules for the game out there uh, in the Asia Pacific, but- Monsanto will set the rules. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pick Sony. your corporate master. That's right. All right, well, stick around. Alex Jones will be in studio closing out the show. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicates, acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today and for a limited time, use the promo code WATER20 and get 20% off all ProPure products. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or give our crew a call at 888-253-3139. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. And this gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on in your mind. And finally tonight on this Tuesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News, we have some chilling developments on the FEMA camp front that we're going to be breaking down. Now, first off, we have the civilian inmate labor camp program that is declassified. 
we have the National Emergency Centers Establishment Act that is public. We have the Army's own manuals linked to in our articles where they call it re-education camps for political dissidents like the Tea Party. We have the training manuals for the military saying their number one enemy is the American people, and that they're trying to take on veterans, gun owners. So you have this whole background here. We have the gun confiscation that took place during Katrina. We have the military training for gun confiscation in Arcadia, Iowa, and other events. So we know this is going on. Something this big, 50 times bigger or more than the Manhattan Project, cannot be hidden forever. So we know what's going on. But when we talk about it, we get ridiculed or attacked. Now, here's the big news I'm going to break down. I've talked about an exponential rise of federalization of police, of TSA on the streets, of NSA spying, of stingray systems, of pre-crime databases, of license plate reading cameras but also an escalation in propaganda in movies and TV where the political dissidents that don't go along with total government and socialism are terrorists, and they've got to be rounded up. They've got to be basically put in prison for re-education. This has happened in every other country, and now it's starting to happen here. We're trying to recognize it so we can stop it from happening. We already have the biggest prison population per capita in the world here in the United States. Now, the new development deals with a story that came out last week at Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson. PSA contains bizarre subliminal message about martial law. Commercial for lobby group conditioning Americans for civil unrest. Now, first off, you've got to boost the audio about five times and then you can hear what they clearly say. Now, predictably, media attacked us and said we were insane. That AARP wouldn't put subliminal audio in a report. When subliminals are even taught in college and are used at a very, very uh, industrialized level. Now, in the last day, AARP and the Ad Council, run by the federal government on record, have come out and said, oh, we're sorry that freaked some people out. We just randomly used an ambient audio file from our nation's past. Well, we've identified the audio file. It's clearly from World War Z. So that's what we're getting at here, ladies and gentlemen is the incredible deception. But let me read to you what they actually had to say. We appreciate those of you who have taken the time to voice your concerns about our Caregivers Assistance PSA and concerns about the background audio file. Our pro bono ad agency who created this video used pre-existing fictional vintage footage audio file as ambient background noise to invoke an earlier era. It is not intended to provide any additional messaging or for any additional purpose. Now, it goes further. Our HUMET, or human intelligence, our millions of listeners that literally form a artificial human AI around the world, feeding through the internet data and things that they analyze and pick up, the same people that flagged this for us and noticed what was happening and got it to Paul Watson to write about it, have now called into the show and said that they followed the Ad Council and the FEMA campaign back and found that it's ready.gov put out by FEMA. We go there. The listeners tell them the truth. It's ready.gov. Uh, we click on the preparedness link, and it tells you how to behave in the emergency center, in the mass care facility, and there's a huge scaling up for all this, and then they have new videos on the Ad Council getting people ready basically for soft martial law. And then you follow the link. It tells you how to sign up to actually get the assistance uh, in your area. This is preparation for economic collapse. It is impossible to keep the derivatives going forever. The bigger they pump the bubble, the more it's going to be devastating 
the more serious it's going to be when it implodes. I'm not saying it's going to happen this week or next year, but it could happen any time. Government is running around like chickens with their heads cut off right now, gearing up, militarizing, and saying their enemy are the, the most law-abiding, patriotic, free market people in the country. It is a fact that the weathermen planned these exact type of activities in the U.S. and mass re-education camps, as Larry Grathwald warned us. They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. And now those very same people are Obama's top advisors. And you've got mega corporations that are going to sit offshore while this country collapses. Mega corporations that want to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Look what the Soviets did for power. Look what the Nazis did for power. Look what our country's done for power. There are powerful individuals who believe that they are insulated from getting the blame for this massive preparation that's happening. They don't want a national debate about militarization of police and FEMA camps before the triggering events come, the catalyzing events that are the pretext for them to be able to carry all this out. I challenge you to check these documents for yourself. There is a huge preparation to arrest Americans like Japanese Americans were in World War II and to put us into forced labor facilities during an economic collapse and basically scapegoat us somehow, probably with stage terror attacks, as the pretext to blame the collapse on us. And it's up to you, the listeners and viewers of this TV show and radio show, to get the word out to your friends and family, to take this video that we'll cut from the news and put on Infowars.com and to email it and Facebook it and Twitter it and to show your coworkers. We are raising the alarm bell. We are the modern day Paul Revere's. You are the modern day Paul Revere's. And never forget, you don't stand in front of us or behind us or beside us. You stand at the heart of Infowars. This is real. We're in this together. They don't want to have a debate about it because we could stop it if we have a national and global debate about it. This is a standardized world program being carried out by crony capitalists to consolidate planetary control. Never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the hope. You are the resistance. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.